Single displacement reactions. One of our goals in this unit is not only to write and balance chemical reactions, but also to be able to predict products. And one of those is to be able to predict products for a single displacement reaction. We have an element and a compound react to give you an element and a compound. So that's what we're going to talk about today. What we're going to use to do this is something called the activity series. It is a list of metals in order of decreasing reactivity. Those at the bottom are less reactive than those at the top. Here's one activity series. Different activity series will, will be bigger or, or smaller depending on if they put more or fewer or less metals in there. So this activity series, the most active metal we see in this one is potassium. So that's listed at the top. That means potassium would react with everything. So that means if you have potassium as an element reacting with a compound, potassium would displace that element in the compound. The things at the top are very reactive. And the things at the bottom, for example, gold is very unreactive. So it also means, for example, aluminum would displace zinc in a compound, but aluminum would not displace magnesium in a compound, and aluminum wouldn't displace calcium in a compound. So let's look at some examples. So here are two different activity series. This is a little bit larger than one you saw before. Notice this one starts with potassium. Potassium as being the most active element, and platinum instead of gold being the least active. Now, also next to that, remember we said that metals displace metals, but nonmetals can also displace nonmetals. Specifically, when we talk about that, we're going to be referring to halogens. Halogens can displace halogens. And the group of halogens we're going to be look at, looking at are these right here. The most active halogen is chlorine. The second most active is fluorine, then bromine, then iodine. So chlorine can displace all the other halogens. Iodine, iodine cannot displace any of the halogens. And also, when we look at this, we can see the same things we had before. Chromium could displace iron, but iron could not displace chromium in a compound. So let's look at some examples. So single displacement reactions occur when one element displaces another in a compound. In displacement reactions, a metal, which is positive, can displace another metal, and a nonmetal can displace another nonmetal. Remember, nonmetals are negative. Some examples. So the A would represent the element, the B and the X would represent the compound. So of course these are single displacement reactions. So if you look here we have magnesium is more active than zinc, so magnesium is able to displace zinc in the compound. So the products of this reaction are magnesium nitrate and zinc. Let's look at another example. Magnesium is more active or reactive than silver. So magnesium can displace silver in the compound, and then silver comes out as an element by itself. There you have element compound, element compound on each side. In the above examples, magnesium can displace either of these. Let's look at an example. If you put magnesium with lithium, remember we said lithium was one of the most reactive elements. Lithium cannot be displaced because lithium is more active than magnesium, so this would be no reaction. So in the above example, magnesium cannot displace lithium. So we go back to our activity series. We're going to look at this to try and predict two of our final reactions. So which of the following would, could occur? We have zinc, and we're going to put that in a copper nitrate solution. Now remember, we used zinc before. Zinc's a metal, has a grayish color, is slightly metallic, a little bit of shine. And copper, I don't know if you noticed that copper is a blue solution. We have that in a couple of labs. So we're going to place zinc and copper. The other possibility is will copper displace zinc? It's going to, one of these two will occur. Both of them cannot occur because one of these metals is more active than the other, but they're both not more active than each other. So the other example is if we put copper in a zinc solution, zinc's actually, actually a clear solution, would that react? What we're going to do is go back to our activity series that we saw before. And in our activity series, we, if we compare zinc, there's zinc, and copper is down here. So since copper is less reactive, zinc can displace copper in a compound, but copper cannot displace zinc. So let's go back to our reaction. So the, for the first one should be the one that can occur because we said zinc is more active than copper. So zinc can displace the copper, but copper cannot displace the zinc. So that is no reaction. Let's look at that a little bit more closely. So the complete molecular reaction for this would be zinc plus copper nitrate or copper 2 nitrate yields solid copper and zinc nitrate. Now notice 
the substances have the same charges they would always have. So zinc in a compound is plus 2, nitrate is minus 1, so you write the formulas the way you always would. Now if you were to write a net ionic for this, now here also we have what this would look like. Here we have the very beginning of the reaction, we put zinc in the copper solution. At the end we have the copper being formed. Let's look at the net ionic for this. The net ionic would be zinc. And notice the spectator ion for this is a nitrate. So if you cross out the nitrate, we need to put the charge on the copper. And the products with this for this reaction would be copper and zinc ion. Notice this is important that this is balanced for atom and charge. There's one at zinc atom here. There's one zinc atom here. There's one copper atom here. There's one copper atom. There's one copper atom on the product side. Notice the reactant side has a charge of plus 2. This is 0. This is plus 2. The product side has a charge of plus 2. So this is balanced for the number of atoms and the type of atoms and also for the charge. The drawing at the bottom is important because we see zinc, this, would, this, would this part would represent the reactants and this would represent the first beaker. We see zinc is placed in a blue copper solution. These, this would represent the products. Copper, solid copper is formed on the surface and that solid copper, notice the solution is becoming less, less blue. As it reacts and reacts, the copper comes out of solution and becomes a solid. Eventually, it'll become a zinc solution. It should be completely clear. And that would indicate the end of the reaction. So we have, at the end, copper and zinc ion. That's pretty much it. That's an, an example of a single displacement reaction and how to use activity series. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.